Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to Street Champs. Quick shout out to our sponsors, Rocky Mountain Blaze and Big Bear Wine and Liquors. All right, today I'm in here with a young hustler, Hustle Trev. How you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hell yeah. Hell appreciate yeah. Appreciate you for bringing me on. For sure, bro. I appreciate you coming, man. Man, love. You've for sure. I'm trying to do this for a while. Oh, 100%. I see it. Hell I see yeah. the potential, man. I love it. Hell yeah. So, uh, you know, tell the people a little bit about yourself before we get into the nitty, the nitty gritty. Okay. Let's see. Where do you want me to start? Like... You know, just like, born, like, you know, just like, I'm also Trev, back. you know, like, what do you, you know, like a quick, like, one sentence summary of what you do. What do I do? So, basically, I'm Hustle Trev, and what I want to do is I want to help you build a revolving door um, around passive income and have a, a deeper understanding in uh, financial literacy, you know, and working, you know, working smarter, not harder, mm. you know. That's just in the simplest term, um, as I could put it. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. For sure, man. Yeah, I definitely want to get into that. All right. So, Hustle Trev. So, uh, we get a little space. Let me get a little space. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> right. Yeah, get comfortable. We're going to be in here for a while. Hell yeah. <laughs> sure. So, uh, where are you from? So, I was actually born in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Um, and uh, my dad was in the military. So, we actually picked up. And uh, after I was born, about first grade to sixth grade, I lived in Germany. Mm. So that was pretty dope. You know, um, being a military kid, you travel a lot, stuff like that. So that was a good experience. And uh, then after that, we came to Colorado. So then that's where I played. Uh, I went to high school, uh, played high school football, played college football, graduated. Um, and now I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> Hell yeah, for sure. So um, Fort Smith? Fort Smith. What the, all right, so what what is Fort Smith known for? <laughs> uh, that's such a funny question, bro, because people wouldn't understand. Like when you think of Arkansas, it's like it's like a melting pot of a whole bunch of different um what would you say? It's like a melting pot of like you see bro, you get a little bit of everything, Asians, Mexicans, black people, white people, like a whole bunch of everything, and it's just not developed though. Like, there's really a lot of opportunity, but no one's kind of making moves on what could actually happen. Mm -hmm. Like, gentrification's possibly coming, but, like, it's just a lot of a lot of opportunity, but they're just behind. So, kind of like, for example, um, like, you, there's just places in Texas you can go that's right outside the city that's, like, underdeveloped, but you know it's coming. Like, Pueblo. You know, Colorado Springs is very nice. It's getting up there. You got Denver, now you got Colorado Springs, and now you got Pueblo right behind it. Pueblo used to be, I feel like people used to think Pueblo's so far away from Colorado Springs, and it's just more downhill. No, it's coming. Mm -hmm. Pueblo West, and it's a lot of opportunity out here too as well. You know, that's where I, that's where I got started, you know, taking advantage of the opportunity. So, um, yeah, that's how I guess I would, uh, let's straight. Yeah, I'm just going to put it right more in front of your face so people can hear your voice better. Okay, bet. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much. So that's what Fort Smith is to me in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of different races and people trying to do things. They're just a little bit behind. But with the right push, it can really be something. Mm -hmm. And I think Jerry Jones is from there, who's a billionaire. So people like to laugh at Arkansas, but hey. Yeah, Sprout's billionaires. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, um. All right. So growing up, um, you know, did you grow up with both parents? Yep. For sure. Yep. Had both parents. Mom, dad, only child. Um, so, you know, it was great. It was oh, great. Describe, like, give us a story that would, like, describe you, like, you know, as a kid. What were you like? <sighs> Playing video games. Fat. You were a fat kid? Oh, I was a fat kid, bro. Oh, no. I feel like that's why I have healthy habits now, because mm -hmm. I was going crazy people don't know that because they be like oh you drinking it got the water you know not this is not a sponsor you know so i'm, I'm open to i'm open to options mm. um but uh i just soda mountain dude just bro i was a big kid i was a big kid you know so i had to work extra hard to try to get to where i really wanted to be mm -hmm. you know stuff like that you know playing football it just kind of naturally all happened together so uh when yeah. you say fat, like how how many how much how much did you weigh? Bro, I was probably like I had a growth spurt in college. I was probably like five six, five seven, about two hundred, two fifteen. 
maybe like 5'9", 225. But that's like... I don't even know if that's fat. I can't even, I can't even like picture that in my head. <laughs> so I don't even know. I don't know. To me, it was. It definitely was, bro. I was definitely chubby, bro. If I pulled up a picture, if you go to my Instagram profile, at Hustle Trev, um, all my media outlets is Hustle Trev. Um, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was. You can go see it on there. Like, yeah. You know, so I had to get right. For sure. So, um, so that really kind of jump started your uh, your healthier lifestyle and like your like the way you're living now. Yeah, hundred percent. Hell yeah, hundred percent. How old are you? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yep. For sure. When did this kind of like whole mindset change happen? <clears throat> Let's see. Probably, as far as like time to get disciplined and really start taking things serious. Yeah, like the whole the whole shebang, the whole thing. When did you start? Just like I just got to start doing everything. Um, let's see. So I had a cousin. So I I was the only child, right? So I had a cousin. Um, so he was like my brother. You know what I'm saying? It's the closest thing I ever had to a brother. So he passed away, and so he was born in Arkansas too. So it's like Arkansas wasn't a bad place, but wasn't a good place. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's why I'm so tr- like financially literate to know what that place is like. It's not the hood and like, oh, it's a game bang going on, but it's still a lot of, you know, mm-hmm. people are just making enough just to live. You know, people are dying to live. How'd he pass away? Um, so he overdosed. On what? Um, I don't know. I know it was something pill wise, opioid, it was something like that. It was something like that. But it wasn't like now we're in like a pen, like an epidemic with the fentanyl. Yeah, all these crazy drugs. But he wasn't on that. It was like literally something that was prescribed to him and just had a bad reaction to it. Wow. You know, so for me, I never um, got involved with it. You know, um, I try other, I go into other remedies, you know, CBD, um, dabble in the THC from time to time, you know, because um, I don't do pills. You know, uh, that's that those type of things are like, but that's what kickstarted me. So like, it's not about that, but that's what kickstarted me because we always had these big dreams to go to, you know, do all these things, um, own businesses. Like and back in the day, it was like we're gonna go to the league and we're gonna do all this, not knowing. Like I wasn't going to no NFL. Like I'm big, but that's what you dreamed of going to the NFL. That wasn't my dream. I just think it was like a path for me to make money. Like you know, most people, African American culture. Um, you know, if we can do it, do it. You know, the league is, I would never speak bad on. If you're a blessing, you're talented enough to go take advantage of that wonderful situation, you know, you definitely should. But a lot of us just, um, that's just not meant for us. I'm not going to say we're not good enough. Everyone has their own gift. Everyone has their own calling, you know. So uh, so for me, that just wasn't it in, in my eyes. But that was what I wanted because I could make so much money and immediately go invest mm-hmm. like i didn't even want to play football i just wanted to i was like put me on practice squad i don't want to play like just give me the league minimum really give me 500k and i can go buy like four five houses you know 20 percent down that's where your head has always been well not always but for a while and so but before he passed i thought i was just gonna do that bring him with me you know we ride off everything gonna be good but then like when that happened because i think i was like 21 um when it happened on the 4th of July, it was just like, wow, like life is real. Like, and there's some, there's some private things that happened along that, that were just like, all right, I gotta just, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta buckle now. I gotta, mm-hmm. you know, take care of my people, my grandparents, my parents, you know? Um, like, you know, I was a, I had a two person household for sure. Great parents. That's why, you know, watching my pops wake up military style mom. But the thing is, they're about to be, you know, in their uh, in their sixties, they're still working full time. And I just, I just, you just see things that people know what I'm talking about financially. If you middle class, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone has their own story. Whether it's medical bills, someone's sick, someone's got money, someone went broke. Like when you're middle class, I feel like you're one step away from poverty. Like literally, like you know, like that one rainy day from we got to take out loans, but the credit is not good enough. And mm-hmm. we all do it. So I'm not going to do the whole spill into what it is, but those are just things I was like, okay, 
I got to get right, you know, so. Yeah, I've definitely heard that most most Americans are two missed paychecks away from from poverty, you know, like two, two missed Fridays, and you're fucking, you're fucked. Because of debt, mm. bills, housing is through the roof right now, real estate's crazy, you know, um, inflation, I guess, you know, that's what everyone talks about, but it's real. But no, seriously, that's just what it's just where we're trained because we go to school, go into debt, which is fine because there's a lot of careers out there when you graduate. I graduated with my degree, you know, got some debt, um, and debt sometimes good depending on how you use it. Um, but you just, I just feel like they put you in a system to work because like I graduated from a business school, but I didn't necessarily know how to start an LLC, mm-hmm. how to do my taxes for my business. What should I like? I took accounting if I want to be an accountant. You know, I just I just find that crazy. I went to a really good business school. Which one was it? Um, the Hassan School of Business at CSU Pueblo. So I transferred there after I left Adam State, and then I started the shoe company. We can get into that later. Um, but I graduated from business school. They said, "Oh, top rate business school." So I'm transferring there. I'm like, well, "Okay." But all my professors didn't own have businesses. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Not talking down on, like, college is great. If you can go take advantage of the opportunity, I got to play football. I got to make great relationships. Um, Antoine Burton, my mentor, um, people know him, uh, played for the Broncos, um, great guy, but he was one of the only, you know, guys I seen running the business, African-American guy playing football, retired, started a business. I was like, that's how I met him because, again, the professors didn't have businesses, but – like how are you a business? How are all my business professors teaching? Cause I'm like they're teaching, but what businesses do you own? And only like one professor had a business. So I'm like, how are you? So that's when I was like, I gotta go find somebody that really knows. So while I'm in college, I started training with him because I was playing football, and then got hurt, and then it just led into, I was like, I just want to see what you do, study him, and then what we talked about earlier, just led to job opportunities and stuff like that. But that was just interesting to me with. How you go to college and you don't necessarily learn those things but mm-hmm. then we get stuck in that system and it's like now we got bills and we just go with it college teaches you to work we go to we go to work just to make just enough and like you said two paychecks away from being screwed mm-hmm. and so that's just that paddle that i don't want to deal with and there's a lot of solutions for it for sure so um <clears throat> all right so Sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm on my phone. I just, I got Airbnb things. Be for sure, man. That's you know, that's the life of a businessman. Trying, I, you know. Yeah, I think I, I think anyone that wants to live that lifestyle could appreciate it. But um, all right. So getting into back like the things that you do. All right. So you were 21. Your cousin um passed away. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Right. But that kind of jump started. Yeah. Like everything. You know what? What was kind of like the first avenue you went in? You went into. Um, <clears throat> let's see. oh, so my first avenue was shoes because, like, in high school, I didn't, I was kind of like, I'm not gonna say, like, ooh, I was a loner, I didn't have no friends. Like, I played football and stuff, but I wasn't a popular kid, you know? But I was still at the table that I was like, not the popular kids, but I wasn't the cool kids. Not the, not like, and kind of below them and in the middle because <laughs> I played sports, you know? The cool mm-hmm. kids play sports. So I have my, you know, some of my best friends, but. Um, basically, I say that because I feel like that's where, like, I guess the foundation of everything, you know, started. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like just being exposed to a lot of things, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. Totally, yeah. So, like, um, so you feel like you kind of not fitting in with any particular crowd. You kind of saw, like, the out, like, the uh, the roundabout of each crowd. Yeah. And you kind of, like, formed Yeah, around. and so I didn't do so. Be doing that was, like, I was cool, but I wasn't, like, I was just doing my own thing. Hmm. Like, homecoming, prom, never went to either of those. Damn, you never went to prom, bro? Damn, I, that's fucked up. You girls, you guys fucked up. Now but I'm instead, kidding. But instead, but instead of doing that, though, right, I went and bought shoes. Because th- that's, to me, that was a better trade-off. Like, I did I, one, I didn't mess with nobody enough to, like, want to go buy a suit. I just didn't want I just didn't want to. Like I said, I was drinking Mountain Dew playing video games. Mm. I was a nerd. So that's why, like, I also could, like... What games? Halo. Halo. I can see that. I can see you being a Halo fan. Bro, Halo. 
going crazy on Halo. Halo, Halo what? Reach. Halo Reach. Two, Ooh. one, two, three. Fire. All of them until <clears throat> until it started getting weird. Like then they stopped producing them, and now they back though. Like I sold. Yeah, that's a whole other start. Sold my Xbox just to focus. It was tough. Tough. Wow. I only did that about two years ago. I'm not gonna make it seem like oh I've been on that. Like it was tough. But yeah, Halo. Man, you name it, Gears of War, um, Call of Duty, of course, everybody played, but mm-hmm. you name it, Game Cube, I was on all that. Damn, I could definitely see that. <laughs> but, um, all right, so all right, so after that, you were, uh, the shoes, so you sadly didn't have a date to prom, I'm sorry, I would have, we would have went as friends. I wouldn't have went <laughs> still, I got, like, I'm not, I'm just not trying to do that, I'm not trying to do all that, bro. But, um, damn. Um, so yeah, I bought the shoes. And so when I got to college, how it basically manifest was, so I had shoes on my mom, so you need to get a job. Playing college football and trying to hold down the job <clears throat> is impossible. I don't know. I don't know. It's just impossible. Being a college athlete is full time. So the, the college athletes out there who's watching this, they know exactly what I'm talking about. It's impossible. So um, I was like, so I need to get a job. And I also just need money. You know what I'm saying? My parents, like, they would send me, like, money, but college gets expensive, you know? Um, like you can only ask them for so much. Mm. You are already taking out loans to go to college. They are already putting their name on it. They doing uh, too much. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's just like I had to just find out ways. So I have all these shoes, and I'm like, okay, I can sell some shoes. I bought a pair of shoes off my teammate because there's some people out there who could wear shoes, and they can hoop in them, run in them do a whole track race in them, and they'll still look brand new. And then me, I'll try to watch my step, and I'll scuff. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. No, you're, you're good. I'll, like, I'll, I'll mess up some shoes in a month. I only wear them three times. You know, so they were nice. So I was like, hey, I'll give you 100 You tell a kid in college, like, what? A hundred dollars for some shoes I wear every day, okay. But I knew how much they were worth, so I took that hundred dollar pair of shoes, went back. My dad was in the military, so I had access to the military base, so they get paid every first and fifteenth. So I would take those shoes, I would go on the military base, I would sell that hundred dollar pair of shoes. I sold that. I sold that hundred dollar pair of shoes for four fifty. So I was like, dang, hustling. Yeah, I'm like, dang, that's crazy. That was so easy. Like, <laughs> I'm like, that's crazy. And he was wearing these. So how I really got started, because I couldn't, like, so before I bought the bots, I would go buy, I would go find shoes that needed work. This is when you could buy shoes on eBay for, like, $80. You could win the bid because no one was bidding. Go to the last page. This was just some stuff I knew about online shopping and bidding and e-commerce. I would go to the very last page to bids and the soonest. And so some bids would only be like 80 bucks. So boom, I bid on it. And it just needed a little bit of work. So then I had a dude who restored shoes. I sent it to him. And then he would uh, edit the shoes. I mean, he would uh, restore the shoes. He would um, clean them up, repaint the soles, dye the soles. So when he got done with them, they looked like they were fresh out of the box, like retail. I didn't sell them for retail, but I still got a good price. You know, so I was doing that to get my capital up. And then I started getting, uh, no, she's chilling now. Oh, well. uh, I'm just going to put her in the other room. <laughs> Where were we? Where shoes. Were we? I was shoes. selling shoes. Uh, oh, I was getting old shoes restored. I had a guy to restore them. Sell them for a higher price. Built my capital. And then I went and got a bot. So this bot, this is now everybody has a bot. You probably heard you can't get nothing on release because there's bots. Mm. But I was doing it before. 12 and 13 year old now you see 13 year olds are freaking <laughs> all the shoes they got all the collect they really putting money in and stuff like that it's crazy you can't compete so i was doing it before basically like no one was doing that so i would get all like the turtle dubs like this was when like the triple black yeezys the um the turtle dubs the pirate blacks um the oxfords like, this is when, when you seen somebody with Yeezys, they were rich. They weren't even fakes yet. You were like, what? Like, now, you everybody can go get a pair of Yeezys. Stock eggs, all these things are existing. Mm. You know, like, this is when you were paying two bands for a pair. 800 
six hundred, you know. Mm. So, um, depending on which release it was, so I was hitting all of those, and I would sell them. I sometimes would sell a pair eight hundred, a thousand, five hundred, depending on because I was the only one that that got them, because I had a bot. So and then also I would go enter the in store releases. So I'll go put tickets in, in all the malls in the state and I'll get more. So now I'm like doubling up. So I was clearing like I was making some good money. For sure. And a bot is just like uh just like an internet fucking algorithm thing that just like buys shoes for you, like you just are you paying a the physical bot? person? Yeah, what is it? You're paying a physical person? So what the bot does is you put all, all your login info and it's constantly refreshing. And then when it drops, I have different accounts. So I have like, I have like six. I have like six emails, six different emails, and six different addresses. So I use my cousin's address, you know. And I'll probably tell him to make an account. I'm like, if you hit, I'll get like two hundred on top of the retail price. So they're like, dang, two hundred dollars. All I gotta do is hit, just enter, like you know. So, um, basically, what it did was I get all this information. And so when they drop. It just auto fills. So by the time you're like looking for your credit card and oh the expiration date, all this other stuff, I done already added to cart, put in my payment information, verified I'm not a bot, and checked out. Mm-hmm. Five seconds. I got a pair. That's why by the time you start fumbling and trying to sold out, oh you're next in line. Those shoes were gone five minutes ago. Damn, that fast. Fuck. So the people who were doing it was like me, and then the, the the big boys who were really doing it too. So, but now it's really hard to buy. That's why I stopped because you can get banned quick. Like people are buying, and it's so hard to stop it because so many people are doing it. But it's just not to me. It's just everything is all hype. So hopped into a different lane. Mm-hmm. All right. So after shoes, like what did you what did you go into? Are are you still into shoes or did that end? Um, so like I still have like clientele and stuff because since I was the only one getting these easy and stuff, I quickly built a high end clientele like NFL players. My mentor played in the league, so once I got him a pair, networking, bro, a valuable, a valuable, valuable token you can take with you is networking is going to take you further than anything you do in life. Networking is the I feel like is the main skill to entrepreneurship, being an athlete, a successful athlete, a successful podcast, building relationships, that's all networking. So if you can do that, if you can start networking, you can network for free. Mm-hmm. That's your most valuable asset to me, networking and time. They're free. Well, time is technically not free. It's pretty limited, but you see what I'm saying? You, can't, you don't got to wake up and pay for it, you know? Mm-hmm. So just take advantage of both and you can really create something from nothing. So... Uh, where was yeah? Bring me back. I asked you about. Um, are you still into shoes? Yeah, I'm still into shoes. Yeah, and oh, networking. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I I am still in the shoes, and how did I get into other stuff? Was well, so I left the botting alone, and um, so mm-hmm. I sell shoes. I got a high end clientele basically with networking. So it's like some NFL guys need a pair of shoes, or. Maybe just some college guys need pairs of shoes, and my name just travels. Hey, can you give me a size 12? This boat, I can still get my hands on stuff. But I'm not just getting all these pairs and trying to sell them for resale and have a stock X. Nah. I've done diversified um, my inventory because now I sell, like, I have an Amazon store, you know, stuff like that. Just selling things at a, at a way higher price than you, you really wouldn't imagine. Mm hmm. For sure. So, um, all right. So after shoes, what did you get into after that? What did you, um, start selling? So, do you want to know what happened between the shoes and the e-commerce? Because I kind of like hmm. developed the e-commerce skill through basically. So I played college football, met my mentor. So we worked with a, a, a quick little background about that was. Basically, a global sports company came on, signed his signed his gym. Um, I don't know if I, I can't really disclose, disclose like all the details of that, but they partnered. I'm not gonna say they signed his gym because he signed with them too. They it was a, it was a partnership. It was a partnership, 
but um, he was doing some some great things down here, and I admired all the stuff he was doing. So you know, I started like taking note and just following him and seeing you know getting through these doors. That's why networking is important because then we got to get through these doors, and I got to sit at tables with CEOs. I got to see quarter million dollar deals, and I got to see how CFOs interact with employees, and employees interact with CFOs, and how you need to carry yourself, conduct yourself, sitting at meetings, you know, being the youngest there by like 15 years. He put me in those positions, so I got to be grateful for that, for sure. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so it translates to the entrepreneurship because I feel like when you're in those positions, though, you got to kind of learn how to build your own personality or, you know, sharks, you know, they're... It's it's like and I, it took a lot of learning. Like it wasn't just natural. It's like I was just glad I was exposed to the corporate lifestyle and things like that. You know, there's a lot of value in using that as a stepping stone to do something else. But so basically, I did that, and it translated to this because um, when I did the e-commerce thing, like that was great. You know, you get the benefits. That was great. Um, you know, you can make some good money, but. Something in me was just more like I just need I just want to do more, you know, like what is your purpose? You know, I feel like when you wake up and you really doing what you lo love to do, it just you have to do it. You it's up to you to really find that passion to do it. And I just felt like really being an entrepreneur, really building businesses, really helping people who, you know, don't want to take that the safe route, which really isn't safe in the long term. Um, um, help people like that figure it out. Mm -hmm. Help guys. When we we did NFL draft prep. That was huge. Him having me exposed to agents and talking to NFL agents, negotiating prices, you know, with NFL agents and lawyers. Like, that's real stuff. Like, Antoine basically told me, that's his name. He basically told me, you go get these guys and do what you got to do to get them. It was performance-based. You go get them, you get paid. And, you know, that was actually good because – it made you go out there like either you was going to swim or you were going to drown. But I feel like it, it made you perform at a high level. So I feel like that transpired into, that helped me take a little bit of notes in to what I'm doing now. So I knew for a fact that, I say all I have to say, it was like that was great. The opportunity is pretty good, but there's a ceiling in it. And again, I just want to do more. You know, and e-commerce was something that, so I was like, man, I remember I was selling shoes. Basically, I, t I took that selling shoes, mixed it with all the stuff that I learned along the way, seeing how money, transactions, selling for the high, selling for the low, buying stuff. It's all the same, just in different worlds. You can do it working for a company, you can do it for yourself. So I was like, I think I have a knack for it, you know, because with my shoe company, um, I just had a lot of success with it. Paid for a lot of things, paid for my car, paid for a lot of stuff. Um, set me up for a lot of, you know, a lot of things. Um, so I was like, you know, this is cool, but again, bills, rent, um, going to college, debt. After you got paid, no matter how much you really get paid, your bills really start to outweigh how much you make, especially when you first graduate college. Like, unless you're a doctor or a lawyer or something, you're going to graduate college. You might make 50 k if you're lucky. You might move to a big city and get eighty thousand, but it's gonna cost you forty thousand to live there that whole year. Let's just say you'll rent five, ten thousand, five, ten, fifty, twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty five, forty. Eight months you already spent forty racks. You're getting eighty K a year. So really you're only making forty bands. You go buy a car. So the list goes on. You see how that correlates? So, um, basically it was like where I was getting paid in the corporate, I just couldn't it just didn't make sense. Um it was great. It was a great opportunity. I mean, it makes sense for a lot of people, but again, there was something in me like, "What's your passion?" And I feel like my passion is helping people bring out the best and just the best in them and chase what they really want to do, you know, and really don't have a filter um, for it. Because I feel like that's hard, like telling you about high school, how I grew up, being the outcast, shoes, and then how it kind of actually transpired into, you know what, I'm just going to follow this. Like, I played college football, kept getting hurt. I'm like, that's just not for me. All these injuries, God got to be telling me, like, it was a blessing because I learned a lot, you know, playing college football. But um, I think it just, it was all, like, supposed to happen, you know? Definitely. Yeah, for sure. I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we wouldn't have met fucking if all that shit didn't happen. Facts. 
you know, this, yeah. <clears throat> um, all right, so, so that kind of, uh, that was the in-between right there. That was the in-between the shoes and your next venture mm-hmm. or, um, or what have you. But um, so that next venture, you, you keep bringing light to e-commerce, right? Right. That's, what is a... Uh, what is the definition of e-commerce for people that don't know anything? So it's really a fancy word for sales on the internet. Internet transactions. Mm-hmm. That's what it is in the simplest terms. And um, how do you fit into it? So how do I fit into it is I have an eBay store. I have a Facebook marketplace store, storefront. Um, I have an Amazon store. Um, my Amazon store is my most profitable. Um, I'll share it here. Um, maybe we do like a little pop-up or something. <laughs> I'll share it here. Um, where I scale, I scaled my Amazon store um, to fifty thousand in six months, just just strictly in online sales. So, um, and that was profit. What were you selling? That was profit. So, um, so in two months, just off of um, swimming pools. So in the summer, for example, like you know, people were like, "Oh, swimming pools." Okay. So for example, um, I could buy a pool for. I'm not going to disclose the size because that's why you got to join my Discord. Um, the Hustle Academy, where I'm letting you know this summer, I'm going to show the numbers, um, how you can make these plays yourself. But um, basically what you do is you can buy the pool for $69.99 and then sell it online on a um, on an e-commerce platform for two ninety nine. Like Amazon. Amazon, eBay. That's why you got to... Um, you know, I'll give you, you can sell it on Amazon. I'll give you a free play. You can sell it on Amazon. I hate when people do that. Because the thing is for me is I'm not charging a lot to make a quick buck. And it's, it's like, it's like, it's lifetime access is a hundred dollars for lifetime access for the Hustle Academy. And basically, so for example, you asked me what I sold. So I want to really stay on top of you. See how it's easy for me to just boop, boop, boop so much, um, veer off. But, um. Basically, in there, um, I was selling swimming pools. Basically, in there, you'll be able to see what I'm selling them for. But I'm just trying to give you the floor and the ceiling and how much you can make. So you buy it for sixty five, sell it for two ninety nine on Amazon. So you do that four times three six nine twelve. That's like twelve hundred dollars, you know. And you spend what sixty sixty um, one twenty. So let's just say you spend around two fifty three hundred for that four. But you're still going to profit. Six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Some people mm-hmm. don't make that in two weeks. Outside of swimming pools, though, what are what are you what are you like uh, flipping? Um, so I actually have a few businesses. Mm-hmm. So um, I choose when the seasons are hot to do that. So I also have I trade. I used to um, day trade as well. Options. I was option trading in the pandemic. Like when my job was like, you know what? It's pandemic. Everyone was getting laid off. Everyone was. Um, they put our job on pause, and I was like, "Bro, I got, I got, I got, I got this cash, but I need to do something with it. I need to do something with it." So I started, started trading. I taught myself how to trade options. Everybody, I know that sounds crazy, but it was like I had two, I had two, I had two options. Do I sound? Am I straight? Yeah, you said okay. Yeah, um, I have two options. Um, I can say, man, because Amazon, because that's when no one really knew what was happening during the pandemic, and they were hiring for a lot. Like, you know, Target was paying double for anyone who wanted to work with the pandemic. All the grocery stores, everyone's like, oh, man, they, they gave us raises and bonuses just for starting to work. Mm. And I was like, man, I can go do that and rack up the cash and then whatever, do what I want to do after that. Or I can force myself to, like, it's going to put me in a corner to, like, make, like, I have no other choice but to be successful or like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't want to think about it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I feel like it forced me to just perform like I've been doing with my past job and stuff like that. So um, basically, I say that to say um, I have numerous, you know, um, ventures and stuff like that that I dive into. For sure. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. For sure. So, um, <coughs> sorry. All right. So as far as like, this uh, hustle academy and these plays go, you know you're not the first person I've heard. You know these um, financial, these, you know I'll, I'll call it as I see it. You know I'm I'm a I'm a person that unaffiliated with anything, and you know we're friends. Right. So yeah. you know like, but I would say like a financial, 
internet guru that's gonna promise you you know like they're gonna promise you they're gonna change your life for only like like you know your price is a hundred dollars but you know the price varies yeah. throughout the internet but um you know like why what I don't know what why should people even give a fuck like what what makes you different or like why because you know I'm not the most financially literate guy but like I feel like paying for it is kind of I don't know it just doesn't make any sense right explain that to me so first off the reason why I'm charging for it is because one is like you hear people like oh you know you put in all this time it's because basically you're paying to get ahead you're paying to skip the line when people go to VIP, they're not VIP because they're just cool. They spend a lot of money. When you go to a VIP section anywhere, or the people who are who are concierge for their cars and stuff like that, is because they they spend a lot of money. If you get into VIP when you go to designer stores and stuff like that, and you start getting deals because you spend a lot of money. Now all the other people who just go there once every six months want to stunt, you're paying full price every single time. Mm-hmm. Every single you're not. You're not getting the full advantage of, you know, the product, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm saying that to say, um, bring me back real quick. I said that. Oh, why you should pay? Why yeah. you should pay to skip the line? Exactly. So I went into the VIP. Um, that's basically what you're doing because for me, um, you're going to be able to get ahead um, with the credit. You know, I started and it took me. I'm 27. You know, it took me. You know, it sounds fast because, you know, for some people, oh, you're young. That That is young, but even right now, I'm still trying to get to that seven-figure range. I'm trying to get to that million-dollar range. To me, I got to hit that, that spot. I've made lots of money, you know, but that's where my next goal is. And to basically get there, you have to... Um, you have to, you have to be able to be able to do numerous things. And, uh, I guess, I don't know. You gotta be kind of fearless. Mm-hmm. All right. So, <clears throat> and I've done that already. Mm-hmm. So that's why the Hustle Academy kind of helps you again, like skip that line. You know what I mean? They're paying for your experience. They're paying for my experience. And it's only a hundred dollars. And for the people out there, I want you to understand that, we spend that on, and probably in a week, by the time you, you pay for gas, you get some groceries from the store, and then on the weekend, you go to the restaurant, you go to the bar, you go to the movie theater, whatever your leisure activity is, you spend $100. For Definitely. fact. Definitely. For fact. The one thing about me is it's $100 for a lifetime access, and guess what you, hold on. Um, guess it's lifetime access, and guess what you actually get? A way to actually make something that's going to pay you back. Something that's actually going to give you a really an asset for $100. If you listen to uh, one of my plays, whether you buy crypto now and hold it for two years, you're going to make that $100. I guarantee I get something off your credit card and then you go apply for a credit card and your credit limit was only 500 because the bank don't trust you. And then I help you raise that credit, and then you go get you go back and you get a $2,500 credit card, a $3,000 credit card. That's Sounds like way more than a hundred dollars to me. Mm-hmm. A little bit more spending money for you. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? So, for me, I also know and understand that a hundred dollars is that's not a guru. That's that's me. Me almost doing it for free. To be completely honest, you got people out here paying fifteen hundred a month, seventy five dollars a month to get this information. So these people are reoccurring. Big, 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 but but some people are providing that much value. I pay for some, you know, to Who learn. Who are some game. that you subscribe to? Um, so some that I'm subscribed to are the Wealth Club. So when I said I started trading options, I feel like I wanted to fast track. So the the Wealth Club, shout out to the Wealth Club. Um, they do stock plays. The dogs. Helen at the full moon. I don't know. I'm just kidding. That's oh, that's why I was like. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Um, so the Wealth Club, they fast track. Um, they fast track your, uh, like, the, they, they're dropping so much information about stocks, trading, options. Like, these guys are doing volume. They're making, you know, 25000 a trade. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching guys make 1500 two bands 
and like beginners making that in trade. So the the wealthy guys, you know, they're spending a good chunk of cheese, but ten thousand in a day, fifty thousand, you can also lose that quick, just as fast as you made it. It's like gambling, kind of, but you can kind of. It's like gambling with a real, real good, educated guess because you start char- charting, you start understanding when it's low, it's probably going to rise again. When it's rising, because basically all options is this betting is going to hit a certain price. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, for example, you buy, you buy, you put an option in on uh, on Tesla when it's split, and you said it split, it was like 300, I think, around there. Um, when it split, it hit three hundred. It was around three hundred, and you said it's going to hit five hundred. Mm. You bet that basically it's going to hit five hundred, and when it hits five hundred, you get a huge payout because you bought all the contracts um, under that because your bet is going to hit five hundred. So you get all of those. You you get basically all those contracts for like pennies on a dollar. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it has to, all those contracts don't become sold until all of them are. Basically, Bob, I could be like mis like communicating that because I'm not. Again, this is not financial advice. Um, definitely, always do your own research. Um, that's not my main. That was just something where that's just from what I picked up from you know doing options. But again, you don't get that in the Hustle Academy. You just basically asked what things you su- su- subscribe to, and again, that's what I was paying for that knowledge. The fact that I didn't have like. All the exact, like, oh, I need to have all this checked off because I think that's what holds people back too a lot. Is like people feel like they have to be master, like a hundred percent masters to like do it. Like, if they don't know something, they're like, you know, it's just not meant for me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And you're not gonna pay no one to do it. So, basically, you know, I want to be able to just fast track all of that for you. And you're paying for the experience. And then, again, for lifetime access, I'll really help you see what gurus you should pay for. I know people out here, again, paying $1,500 for stuff that they're basically only be getting for $100 from me. Plain and simple. And really more. Because I tell you and I help you understand some of these things aren't going to just happen immediately. I want to be transparent about some products. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you that, you know, um, you're not going to make... How did I make twenty five thousand? I also spent eight thousand dollars on inventory. What was the inventory? Like the swimming pools. It was all swimming pools. All swimming pools. AK. Went to every store in the region, bought them out, got a U haul truck. Are you doing that on a yearly basis though? Mm-hmm. Every year you do that. Yeah, or if it's not that, I'll find something that's just as stable. But that's why I stack them, right? I want to hear something other than swimming pools. So, um, Let's see, inflatables, inflatable holiday decorations. Halloween come around, Michael Myers, Jason, six foot inflatables. You go get them at these stores, pay twenty three dollars for them, sell them for one oh five. Hmm. Buy them out, and you can drop ship them. So if you know that they're available, what you could do is you can um, basically see them on see them on Walmart dot com. Yeah. Who the hell is paying this money though? Like, who's not going to Walmart for? So they once they sell. So the thing is, that's why in the Discord I tell you to buy them at certain times, because I can't. I'm not gonna tell you when everything start releasing because then it would be no point to join because that's what I did. I had to go and strike out a lot to understand when to buy, when to sell. Just like stocks, everything kind of works together, right? So you're paying for that, so you know that. All right, this month I can set aside this amount of money, and I know for a fact I can flip it for this amount. Mm. You know, um, not everything is like a guarantee, but the thing is, you can't lose any commerce, right? So you go to the, all the stores I tell you, they give you receipts, you get credit cards, you got ninety days to return it. So we don't move it. Guess what? Go get a refund, and buy something else. Most of the, you know, I'm sure you can see the analytics on Amazon. Most of the purchases are they coming from in state or out of state? Um, out of state, hundred <laughs> percent. But I've had a few in state. I ship to Pueblo. Mm. Fact. So you'll so they'll buy it via Amazon in the same city that you bought it in. Yeah. So because they're sold out, because I know these dates that you're paying for. I know these dates when you go buy them, clear them out. I know when they're going to get them all in, and I know when they're going to stop getting them in. Mm-hmm. And by the time they're about to um, basically 
um, stopped getting them in, people decided to buy them, but I bought them out already. So, for example, pools. The reason why I get them is because I'm buying pools in, in May. It's cold here in May still. It's still in June a little, a little bit sometimes. Well, January, February, March, April. April, May, I buy them. It's cold here in April. May kind of, but summer doesn't really start here until July, <laughs> August. So by the time they go get them, I already bought them out. Mm -hmm. So now people are like, it's hot. I want a swimming pool. And they go on Amazon. I go buy a pool for two ninety nine, thirteen hundred. 1300 Multiply that by 10. That's a good devious markup. That's a, lot, that's a big markup. It is. Demand, supply and demand. It's like that's like what three hundred percent. I I got I will I will show you. Matter of fact, can I, can I, can I pull no, something yeah, up? No, yeah, pull something up. You know. Let's see. And like, facts are credible, credible. You need credibility. No, yeah, for sure. And like, um, it's interesting to to have this conversation. You know, like people that are going to be listening to this probably off the bat are in our, or in my at least, like economic range. You know, we're not. I'm not on the ears of people that are making these millions of dollars, you know, right. but you said three hundred percent. Yeah. This is what so that's that's a swimming pool right there. That's a UPS store. Can I read it out loud? Um yeah, you can read the content out loud. Okay. It says if you have a, an existing store I'll help you scale your business for a free DM the word hustle. For uh, for a free DM the word hustle. Sorry. Fucking can't read. <laughs> And then basically I said the UPS the UPS truck is picking up pools from my house, right? But look at the percentage. Just in the summer, my store is up 6,000. What what's the number? 6,837%. Mm. That's my that's my Amazon store. That's pool season. Like you can't do you can't do that on a on your like and but the thing is like I said, so my in my Discord, right? And I'm not trying to sit here and pitch you on Discord all day. You can either join it or you don't, but this is just part of me as well. This is what I do. People want to understand. Um, people want to understand. Oh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, people want to understand how how are you an entrepreneur? Like you said, how do I, you know, go take a stand and really do this full time? A lot of people, there's a lot of entrepreneurs. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of entrepreneurs on the internet not doing this full time. That that was my that's me that was my wake up in reality and I'm not even trying to call people out I'm just saying there's a lot of gurus though you're not sitting here saying ooh you invest in my podcast of course you know what I'm saying I'm gonna help you get sponsors you know what I'm saying which could be a thing one day for sure or maybe not but what I'm getting at is there's I know a lot of entrepreneurs who are not doing like really doing this full time really out here on their own. You see what I'm saying? Like, really out here, I don't have a job. Everything I do, every morning I wake up, I have to go hunt. I'm hunting. That's why I use credit cards, I use OPM, I use other people's money, and then I make a lot of it. Because, for example, you want to start an e-commerce store, this is why you should invest in the Hustle Academy. And it's the last thing I'm going to say. Okay, okay, I just said you don't have no money because you work a regular job, right? Mm -hmm. Regular jobs are perfect. Use that regular job, leverage it for... You know, a credit card. Like, you know what I'm saying? Leverage it for a credit card. You leverage that for a credit card, right? And what you do then is, I tell you the product, you go buy the pools. You buy the pools for that $399, right? Get you a nice little $4,000 credit limit. You know what I'm saying? Um, get you a $4,000 credit limit, buy them all out. Maybe only utilize 30% of it. Keep it below, you know, 30%. Um, if you can, but we're going to pay it off so fast, it don't matter what you spend on it. Um, so you spend a thousand dollars, just keep it low, like you're a little nervous. You spend a thousand dollars, three, six, nine, twelve, you get four pools. Now we list those pools for twelve hundred. That one pool just paid for all four pools. Now everything else is twelve hundred, twelve hundred, twelve hundred profit. You you pay the twelve hundred off on the credit card, so you can pay your rent with your work, with your job, you know, stuff like that. And then after that, everything you just made from Amazon is profit. So now you're not like, ooh, I got to wait for these pools to flip, but I also got to pay my rent on the first. Or you're just trying to figure out things like that as secondary income, let's be honest. No one's trying to invest their own money. You can't. You got kids. You got, 
So this is for any age. You're in college. You know what I'm saying? Your mom's telling you to work. You got rent to pay. You got books to pay for. You're a full-time student. You're trying to party on the weekends. I need a little extra cash, dude. You know, I need, I need some food. I'm trying to go, go out to eat. I can't afford to. I can't even afford to cook because I don't have money. You know, I'm, I'm working to deliver whatever you're doing in college to make ends meet. I know what that is like. So whether you're a six-figure entrepreneur and you're trying to make passive income, because I can teach you how to do all these other things, start an Airbnb business, scale that up to six figures, scale that up, get a super host, all those things that you need to do. Um, or, you know, you work full time and you want to make some passive income. I just taught you how, you know, just with that credit card, oh, I go apply. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Buy the product, pay the credit card off, take the profit. That, that 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 sounds like easy, right? But a lot of people don't utilize that tool. Mm-hmm. Why not? What do you think? Um. All right. What do I think? I mean, I think like I understand why you're being secretive about your methods because it's it's proprietary information. You know, like this is what's going to get you paid at the end of the day. But like um, like from the outsider looking in, like. I guess I'm just a skeptical person, but I understand, like, like, um, like we were talking about Grant Cardone, the Cardone University. Like Grant Cardone has this, does the same thing. You could pay Grant Cardone X amount of dollars, and he'll he'll teach you how to be make X amount of dollars. You know, basically, yeah, exactly. Cardone University is a thing. Um, like Wake Up Pueblo is doing that. Wake Up Pueblo is doing the, the wake the, undercover billionaire boot camp. You pay them a thousand dollars. It's a three day seminar, and they're quote unquote guaranteeing that you're gonna 10x your business whatever whatever business, business you have you know right, right. so like you know and I if you look at any of the marketing they're fucking how much is it? $1,000 oh. for three days yeah you know I'm, I'm definitely interested but um if you look at any of their marketing they don't really give you the meat and potatoes of their seminars or their content or whatever you know they kind of dance around it yep which is what you're kind of doing you know, which I understand, you know. Like. No, because this is my thing. Really, I'm not, really, I'm not dancing around it. This was, this, the stuff that you start with with the credit card should be common knowledge. Unfortunately, it's not because, again, we go to school, we get a job. They don't teach you how to leverage credit in college. Mm-hmm. You probably trash your credit in college because you get student loans, you get a job, can't pay for the student loans, they default credit score drops you go to buy a house can't buy a house try to get an apartment now you're in an apartment for until you're 35 36 instead of owning something when you only need three percent down to get an fha loan so again real estate something that you're getting there and so for me it's like i'm doing the public knowledge and i'm doing the work for you i'm making you make that jump because you said you're skeptical skeptical right there's not i mean i mean i understand like i know you outside this podcast like we've talked a little bit like i know you're you have you have knowledge that I don't, but other people that are watching this that are just getting introduced to Hustle Trev, they don't know, you know. Right. So not me in particular, but yes. You gotta and you gotta earn that though. I also understand that I have to earn that trust. I have to I have to earn that. Um and for me, believe it or not, for it's lifetime access. So that's just one of the biggest emphasis I wanna put on it. Again, you can spend that weekend money. I know for a fact I was in college. I'd spend that, at, you know, I'd spend that on a weekend, two oh, yeah, weekends, facts. bar, food, late night munchies, you know, pizza facts. at the midnight, alcohol, buying, buying stuff I should not be buying, just food, just shopping, not even really expensive shopping, just being, t- you know. Mountain Dew and Halo. <laughs> Mount- Halo's like 60 bucks, bro. Facts. No, seriously, games, when Fortnite drop, everyone buying all the skins. All of that stuff, you got Netflix now, the modern kid, everybody got Netflix. People don't understand the stuff that we're actually tr- trading off, you know? Mm-hmm. So, for sure. You put that away, you buy this, and you're, you're actually going to be able to generate, you know, income. And I basically just told you exactly how. You could literally just listen to what I just said for free and play this podcast back. Don't get your credit card. Buy you one pool. Buy you one pool. In one of those price ranges that I said, put it on Amazon. Wait till July. Watch it sell. I didn't say you were going to make it that. Uh, 
You know, I'm not sitting here like a guru saying, oh, you're going to make six. You're going you're gonna, to, man, I can help scale your business in six figures in 30 days. For sure. I mean, I'm definitely going to buy a pool now and, like, put that shit on Amazon. I mean, like, I can't, I can't, for, I mean, like, I'm not going to try that shit, but, like. Maybe we could form a partnership, right? And mm-hmm. for everybody that subscribed to your podcast or something, um, from what I do or something, and everybody from your podcast follows me at Hustle Trev, anything, like, comment, subscribe, show any amount of love. I'll just throw a free. I'll just give you a free free tip. I'll give you some free that's in the Discord. Damn, via Instagram or what? Instagram, we'll figure it out. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. You heard it here. Follow Hustle Trev. Yeah, we'll get all your social and stuff in the in the um, description. So, yeah. You know, I appreciate that, man. And um, I think that people that are going to be watching this are really going to appreciate that, you know, like... Airbnb, that's something. Yeah. We might as well. Yeah, let's get into that. When did that start? So... That started when I left PBR. So when I was in the midst of leaving, I said, you know, I have a passion. I want to do this full time. I want to I want to embody the entrepreneur lifestyle. I don't want to tippy toe no more. But that should make you nervous. Mm-hmm. I want to be realistic. Like I want people to understand, you know, like people see entrepreneurs, oh, waking up early, meditating. Ooh, <laughs> man, we organize whiteboards, markers. Whiteboards, markers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. High rises and stuff, traveling, planes, you know. That's definitely part of it. You know, I haven't got to experience the highest level of it, but it's definitely, you know, like I said, I travel all the time, but I'm working. Like, every time on my phone is business. Mm-hmm. I don't, I have a girl, boom, that's it. My family, boom, that's it. Everything else is business. I don't even text them back. My parents be like, what you, you still alive? I'm like, I didn't even, my bad. And then you need to get better at that. that don't over hustle, don't be a workaholic. I'm just throwing that out there, but. We'll talk um, about that. It's just the focus, but so that's that's what drives you. Um, so the Airbnb basically came upon like I want to do this. So for me, I was like, man, the area we're in is a very great area, um, Northern Colorado area. Um, throwing that out there, Northern Colorado area, and uh, it's Wait, just. I think we're in Southern Colorado. No, that's that's where my property is. Oh, at. word. All right, all right, all right. That's where my yeah, Northern Colorado area. What, what city can you say? Um, the monument, the monument area, monument between monument and Pueblo. Isn't isn't monument like Den? Wait, wait, I don't even know. No, okay, all right. See, no, it's like Castle Rock. Nope, you don't know your. You know, you know, yeah, you see, I know. <laughs> I know my geographical location. Bro, I moved away, which is very important. I dude, I graduated high school when I was eighteen, and I moved away from Pueblo. For five and a half years. Me too. Well, sort of, kind of. Yeah, I didn't even plan to be back. COVID. I lost my job as a. I was tutoring high school, um, at risk youth, like kids that like brought guns and shit to school. Oh damn. And um, the high school shut down because of COVID. Right. So I, I lost my job and I, I had to move back. But I kind of I'm still learning. And look at you, bro. Che- like where you turn some. You probably like now you got street champs, going crazy, man. Exactly. Facts. Hey. Shout out, but yeah. Yeah, fucking, yeah. You know, I'm not retarded. I just am learning fucking Pueblo cities lo- locally now again. <laughs> no, it's, no I, I was just saying it's all it's all about placement. That, you know what I'm saying? That's 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 all I was getting at. And I know, the, I know Colorado like the back of my head. You know, Denver. I know all the, you know. So basically, so boom, I started that because I was going to be. So I knew I had pay stubs from an official company. I used that, used the Amazon as I'm. Transitioning, got the got it, boom, got it all set up, and uh, you're probably like, well, who mentored you and who, bro? The best people learn by doing it. Mm-hmm. I make all the mistakes for you, you know. Um, it gonna cost you a hundred dollars to make your LLC, and that's if you do it. You know what I mean? But there's little things like that that I could just help you. So boom, I just needed a guaranteed income, so I knew if I could hurry up get this Airbnb launched. That could replace. My goal was to replace what I was making, at least double it. My goal was to double it. I know a lot of people's like, make what you're making and then some, then quit. Do what works for you. That's what I my best advice is. Set a goal, follow it. You know what I mean? So for me, I wanted to make double what I was making. You know, and so my that was my goal, my Airbnb. So basically, long story short, I achieved that. So that's why I wanted to basic basically. Um, 
just use Airbnb as a gateway out to give me that income I needed to keep my head above water, pay my rent, and do other ventures. All that money I was making was going into other stuff. Stocks, um, crypto, um, raising my credit, paying off stuff for my collection, calling and negotiating. So I have credit repair in there. I could teach you how to call and negotiate. Hey, I got $1,800 worth of stuff in my medical collections. People don't understand that. You can go and you can actually call them yourself and you can negotiate and talk that down just by telling them, hey, what's the least that I can pay to get this off my record? Oh, 700 Because the thing is, they're already in, they already paid the, the hospital or whoever you're in debt with. The hospital got their money. They're just happy with whatever they get off of resolving their debt that the government pays. So, uh, all right. well, we kind of veered off this topic, but I kind of want to, I definitely want to, um, really div- dive into it the uh, airbnb um business that you do all right all right so so walk me through that like what how many how many airbnbs do you have um so i have one that i fully manage and then i have a few that i partner on so basically what that means is instead of me um carrying all the overhead something i i can teach is you can get your property to Superhost because that means my property is a Superhost verified property. I like I like I like everything to match. That's one thing about me. So I'm gonna go pull up live my my property on Airbnb. I'm going on the app, so there ain't no. I don't know if you can see, but he can see. There's no screenshots. That's, I see it. It's the Airbnb it's app. It's live. It's live. Um, new luxury modern modern apartment. That's my property. And um, basically, um, no, here's my stats right here. So these are all of my payouts. Just scrolling, just seeing it'll keep loading. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at, I'm looking at a few hundreds every now, every, every you scroll, keep going. every single scrolls hundreds. That's very impressive. 800 not like so 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 I, I say that because so now so I'm a super host so I have 4.8 stars you guys can see 4.8 stars 20 reviews 95% response 4.8 where the fuck are the other point two? the point two, bro so I'm a super host so really that's the best you can get one bad review not even one bad review one three star review it's so harsh one three star review will drop your median so truthfully I'm glad to have the 4.8 the 4.8 is I, if you go look at all of my positive responses, there was like one Karen. What they say? They were like, he didn't have my eggs. He didn't have my brown eggs. Bro, what? Bro, like, I could literally read it, bro. But it was really like, bro, she was talking about there was dust. Like, there was dust. Like, there was dust, like, um, under the, uh, my, all my TVs in my, in my properties are mounted. There was like dust on the freaking square of the TV, bro. Wow. She went, went up to it and was like... She said, oh, it's so filthy. There was dust on the squares of the TV. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Maybe, maybe like, I, luck's been going too good. You know what I'm saying? Business has been way too good. It's booming. It's dusty in there. You know, people have been partying. I, fucking. I don't know, but, but like, you know what I'm saying? Everyone's leaving me five-star reviews. Super clean, luxurious, oh, flat screen. So I put some, I put some bread up. So again, leverage credit. Go get your credit card. Buy everything you need for the low. Finance it. Whatever y'all do, boom. Whatever. So, anyways, um, yeah. So yeah. So she's just going crazy and she's spazzing. So while she was in there, this a quick short story. What you got to deal with Airbnb? The reality is not just oh I'm making money. <laughs> like she, I had a clean. I had to call the same day cleaning crew. Pay for them to come in same day. She was at the gym doing, she was doing whatever she was doing. I said, if you could just leave the apartment for a few hours, I'll come clean it. Just for that. I had it fully clean. So she basically went to the store, came back. It was like a brand new spot. Model home type. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know. That's all she wanted. That's all she wanted. I did all that. She's After she checked out, she still left that bad review, bro. She's the reason why you asked where the point two went. She, she took him. If you're listening to this, never stay in Colorado again. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> like that's basically how if you read her review, you would feel. 
But that's just one of the ups and downs of the business. There's there's food spots. That's where, you know, there's food spots I went to, three stars. You know, I've been like, nah, I bet it's but I went in there, it was busting. And people, and you know why? They had three stars, not because of the food, because the staff was slow. Mm-hmm. I don't want the food. Patience is virtue in everything we do. I'll definitely wait a few for a fucking good ass steak or something. For sure. So what's the difference between doing that in your business and doing it? You really carry that aspect in the numerous things. I know I'm talking a lot about business, but that really translates everything. You got faith. You got religion. Patience. It's written in the Bible. All that. Everything is like patience and take your time. You want to grow a seed before it turns into a tree. You can't just water it all day. You could dump 100 gallons on it. It's not going to grow. It's going to drown. Mm-hmm. It takes time. Nurture it. Grows into a tree. Feeds everybody else. Wow. Great metaphor. You know, you're, you have great metaphors. Hell yeah. All right. So, um, all right. So as a, as an Airbnb goes, um, like, give me some of the, uh, like, give me some of the growing pains as to start like that. You're like, if I was a new person wanting to start that, how would I go about that? Okay. Finding somebody that's going to let you sublease or, uh, Airbnb arbitrage. And what that is, is um, going to an apartment complex or something similar to that, condos, whatever you have in your city, and going and asking them, can I rent this space out? Can I Airbnb this place? Being transparent with them. But um, there's things you can also Google um, to figure out how to pitch that. But I also give people the opportunity to learn how via Discord. Again, like that's the last time I mentioned it because I'm just saying you can also go to on YouTube and Google how to pitch Airbnb. You can do your own research, but I'm giving you things that I did because you just seen I have them. So these things are going to work. And um, but that's just one of the things people don't understand. People just think, oh, I'm just gonna go apply for an apartment. I want to Airbnb it out. If you don't have permission, you don't talk to the landlord. You can get sued. Mm -hmm. So people, you know, so just keep that in mind when you're going out like, oh, I'm just going to go pay rent on this apartment. I'm going to rent it out. It's going to be. So just little stuff like that. That was probably one of the growing pains was finding a place that was going to let me do it. Mm -hmm. Taking 18 to 20 no's and getting that one yes, two yeses. And then, so when you say, how many do I actually have, I manage and I help other people. So I got super hosts. That's hard to obtain. That's why I'm putting emphasis on it. So basically, I could list your property. You got an Airbnb. Let's just say the pictures suck. The descriptions suck. It's just not doing that well. You're barely paying rent in there. You partner with me because I'm a super host. Now your property's at the top of the list because the super host status and Airbnb is advertising it for you, mm. and then um, you you now you're getting you're getting booked way more. So now you're you're making three three times of what you're paying just to make that monthly rent. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm basically helping you scale your business, and you're just giving me a percentage. You're still taking eighty percent of the income. Mm. Because you don't have time to respond to all the Airbnb messages. That's something you have to do. You got to respond within an hour or your response rate drops. You lose super hosts. Put your phone down because you want to go to bed and you miss a message at 2 a.m. You're going to lose super hosts. <laughs> I do that for you. I basically ensure that that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Or you can do it yourself. It's growing pains. So wow. that's just a little bit of insight. Wow. Yeah. For sure, man. That's um, it's really interesting. You know, I know I know a lot of people that want to get into that, and um, that's uh, just good good to hear someone talk about it. Hell yeah. Yeah, we've been going for an hour and twelve minutes. That's crazy. Does it feel like it? That's a best move, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um. All right. So, uh, is there any topics that you definitely want to get off? your chest today that you came in with just like wanting to talk about um 
I think it was just one one thing, uh, one thing of advice. Not even advice. Just something you everyone I feel like could apply mm-hmm. to what they're doing is it might sound generic, but really just kind of stay true to like your passion and don't don't go outside and get entertained by like like the entrepreneur lifestyle. I try to drop all that with a lot of not negatives, but a lot of ups and downs that comes with it. Because I feel like a lot of us are going to go outside and we're going to try to chase entrepreneurship because that's what the world's doing. Oh, I want to make passive income and work from home. And, you know, it's 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 an everyday grind until you get to that point. I could also tell you somebody who's making, you know, $80,000 a year and living below their means and doing all the things they really need to do credit-wise and they're still getting ahead buying property. And you got to find something. So what I'm saying is just don't be in a race to, like, you know, do all these things that's outside of your realm because ultimately it's going to make you run slower. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like football, for example, when I was talking about it, I was trying to run so fast in football, having surgery, coming back, playing football, transferring, putting all this time in. Yeah, granted, I learned a lot of lessons. But if I probably would have just been able to just go a little slower, and like I always said, I want to do entrepreneurship and started diving in that sooner, I would have... I would have been finally on that that pathway for like takeoff, you know what I mean? Because I'm doing something that don't sound cool, selling pool. Like it sounds cool when I tell you to profit. It don't sound cool without it though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So just gotta be able to just really man, just stick, find your lane, stay in it, no matter how weird it might seem, feel, because the world's doing that and this. Just trust in yourself, believe in yourself, have faith in that. And I'm telling you, like, because people think, because one thing I want to emphasize, I do talk about money, my discords about money, but I don't really put a lot of um, emotion and, like, power on money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's why it comes in abundance, because I just kind of put out, you put out good energy, and that's the thing, number one, whether you invest in my discord or not, you invest in me as a person, you follow me on Instagram, you help me, those are all investments. It's not just the money. You like, subscribe, that's all me. I appreciate all that time that you took to just click that. It's an investment of your time into my business, into me as a person. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's just the way I like to look at it, and that's how I feel like before the money and all these other things, take from that, always be yourself, do what you have to do, and I feel like all the those things, the money and all these other things will fall into place. And that's hard for me to even say because that's what I'm thinking about 90% of the time if I'm being transparent, being honest. But that's just something I feel like that's something I want to relay because every time I just do what I really feel like I'm called to do, it just come because, you know, you're going to bless others with it. It just, here, okay. <laughs> hmm. For sure, man, yeah. I think this was a, definitely a gem of a pod. You know, people that are, Def, people that watched this whole thing are um, probably gonna have to replay it back just to just to get everything that you were saying and you know and all my questions <laughs> yeah. you know too because I'm coming from a non-educated side you know just just a bystander right you know like um I was just a regular just a regular person so yeah it's good to it's good to open your eyes to other uh other means of living other than like the nine to five grind that everyone everyone wants like the corner office you know and i'm gonna be that one again to stretch i'm not shaming that nowadays people be feeling like oh if i'm not doing that i'm not doing you know what i mean i'm not doing it right or i'm putting myself down because i'm not where i'm supposed to be at Mm -hmm. living that that might be your blessing Mm -hmm. you know facts so that's what I ultimately, I just want to help people get ahead and still at the end of the day, you still got to search within you what you want to do. That's just one check. That's just one piece of the puzzle. For sure. That's it. Hell yeah. All right. Um, you want to shout yourself out for the camera, for the people, so where they can find you and shit? Yeah, man. Um, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, all social media platforms. Follow me at Hustle Trev. Mm-hmm. Um, Discord coming, the Hustle Academy. Um, but man, again, I just want to, my bad, I'm hitting the microphone. Um, I just want to really, man, I want to help people build that revolving door um, financially because I'm somebody that went through, you know, 
you know, things that held me back from a lot of big purchases and just saving money and just getting ahead. I just want to make this life, we only here for a little bit, a little bit easier. Too many people struggle with it. I'm blessed with the knowledge of it. And what you do with, when you have something, you teach others. So. Facts. Hell yeah, bro. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for coming. So, appreciate for you, sure. bro. We'll have you back. What? what? Facts. Hell yeah. Hustle Trev, Street Champs. All right, like, comment, subscribe, guys. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all that, and now Patreon. All right, guys, peace.